I think, you know, trying to attract new revenue to support and, and, and new economic development, you know, we have to make that feasible and an enticement, just as you would if you were a new marketer of a product. Uh, it just doesn't happen. You have to work at it. So I, I, I totally agree with Mark on that. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and our last question from the panel is to Bill, and we'll start with Don on this one. Thank you. Um, up in Concord, Governor Lynch has expressed his support for the school funding amendment, which would allow uh, the legislature to specifically target uh, education funding. This has been an issue uh, in different forms that Londonderry has, has taken a strong stance on in the past. Um, what is your take on the school funding amendment? And more specifically, if elected, uh, what would you do proactively, uh, both locally and perhaps in Concord, to lobby regarding this issue? Um, thank you very much for that question. And it's, you know, I think it's really critical. School funding is critical to our future. They are, after all, our children are our future. That said, um, it, from my understanding of, of the of the school funding issue, I think that goes back as early as the 1600s with the great law and, and progresses then to the state law of 1789 and step after step after step after step, uh, where a solution to the issues never really occurred. And, and I think it would be extremely presumptuous of me to say that, that uh, I have a solution for it, because obviously I don't. Nobody thus far has come up with one that could, they could build a consensus on. And I would suggest that what we need to do is we need to work with our school board. We need to work with our local officials. We lead, need to work with our state reps, representatives to ensure that our children receive the highest uh, education quality, hi highest quality ed of education that's possible um, so that they're prepared for the world that's forthcoming. Was that because I parked in your space? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Would you take? No, no, I. <laughs> All right, where were we? <laughs> Thank you for your service. <laughs> yes, exactly. exactly. I did park in his space. <laughs> After that infomercial yeah. from uh, AAA, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> Go ahead, Doc. Again, you know, it's an issue of, of, of a, in terms of something proactive. Well, proactive means that, that you know, obviously you get together with, with as many people as you can to try to build a consensus to ensure that you get the funds that we get, not you, but we get the funds that are necessary to give the education to the children that we need to. Uh, and I don't see that as a simple solution. I don't think there's, there's a quick answer to it. Uh. Okay, thank you. Mark. I guess I've been around too long. I've been around long enough to remember Claremont 1 and Claremont 2. I don't go back to the great law, so. <laughs> I'm not quite as old as Don. But uh, yeah, it's, it's that old uh, expression, it depends on whose ox is getting gored. So we've been a receiver town, we've been a donor town, and I, I have to smile when I look at the, at the towns on the seacoast that used to pave their streets every year, whether they needed it or not, because they had all this money. Uh, and now who's squawking, right? Uh, I, I think it's, it's what Abraham Lincoln once said, uh, you can't listen effectively if your mouth's moving. And I think there's gonna have to be a consensus in Concord uh, with the state legislature that says, We've got to fix the problem. We can't keep passing the buck, and we can't re recreate a formula that works for our constituents, but not for the constituents uh, for the moment, maybe on the seacoast or in the resort areas. Um, and I'm certainly not advocating a broad-based tax. Some do, and, and, and you're not hearing me say that. Uh, but the state does have, and I, th I think this was the, the court's decision, they have to define an adequate level of funding for education. I personally be happy with that, you know, because I, I want every town then to, whatever that number is per student, to receive that amount. I, I think that 
probably in the 20 years that, that we've called Lundary home, Lundary School District, to my knowledge, has never met or exceeded the statewide average cost per pupil. When you look at the assessment scores, the graduation rates, the dropout rates or lack thereof, the truancy rates or lack thereof, uh, excellence in academic sports and music, and on and on it goes. And as a taxpayer, I think we're getting a heck of a bargain. So it's, it, I don't think it's a local issue in terms of how the school board or the district, in, in our case, is managing the, the financial process. I think it's, it's what Don and Tom have already suggested. We need to have a collaborative effort with our state reps, with what will be a new state Senate seat open uh, for the taking, uh, and the other legislatures in Concord uh, to wrestle this to the ground once and for all and find a solution that is uh, ideally equitable you know, for all the communities. All right, thank you. Deb? Well, education, as we all know, is number one. That's the reason why most people move to this community. It's why I moved to this community. Okay. Um, people don't mind funding excellence. They see the results. I think one of the pivotal things, Mark just addressed it, is we can do what we can locally with the funds. And I think we do an outstanding job. But we also have to make our voice heard by our local representatives in Concord. Let them know what our needs are. Let them know how those funds are distributed. And be very vocal about that. I think also, too, we have one of the finest educational systems in the state and in the country. And I think that being said, we are a leader. And we should act like leaders and we should voice our opinions as leaders to Concord and be very proactive and active in letting people know what we do with our tax dollars, what programs we fund. Also, in this community, we pride ourselves on our special education department. Um, people are actually coming to our community for this service in need. What a beautiful thing that is, that we can service that. So I take great pride in our community um, as a single mom with a daughter who's extremely active in uh, sports and in programs, and I'm very active in a lot of those programs. And also, I, I just want to say to the community, we have some of the finest and greatest volunteers that are paid nothing that make this community tick within the school system. and. We're a leader in that as well. Uh, so I think we have a lot to show the rest of the state and that our voice is extremely important for the whole state. Thank you. Tom, it's yours. I'm kind of passionate about this issue, so I'll try to control my response here. Let me, let me first say that, um, to echo a little bit what, what Deb just mentioned, that we need to get our local reps working for the community, first of all. We need to get them all on the same page pulling in the same direction uh, it was I I, th I think unconscionable and and quite frankly embarrassing that the last time a, a crucial vote was put be before the legislature it was our own a couple of our own state reps that pushed over the uh, the bill or, or get it uh, to pass uh, in the wrong direction which cost us a couple million dollars a year in funding uh, and they they uh, they voted against our, our own community. Um, most of our state reps are, are with us, uh, but uh, they all weren't, and it was very disappointing. I think that, um, in general, I think you get what you incentivize. And right now, the state's formula incentivizes poor performance. Uh, the Londonary school system has an extremely high uh, performance record. Uh, not only with how much we pay, so the value of, the, of what we're getting, but the results. And, what's, and what, how does the state treat that? They punish us for having that excellent performance. Uh, I think that the state needs to recognize that Southern New Hampshire is the, is the economic engine that drives the, the funding for, for 
the New Hampshire state government. And the disrespect.